Is the RTX 5070 faster than the RTX 4090 as Nvidia claims? Well, let's find out. First and foremost, I wanna give a huge thank you to MSI for sending us over the RTX 5070 Trio. This card is absolutely stunning. Uh, their design that they've been doing with these cards have been really nice, especially that nice little dragon logo in the back. And, and seeing as this is just a 70 series, they actually still went with a full size um, GPU. It's actually a decent sized GPU. It's still two slotted, kind of like two and a half slotted GPU. Uh, so cooling was no issue with this GPU. And of course it still has a 12V connector as well. So back in January, Nvidia announced the 5000 series at CES stating that the 5070 was going to be outperforming the 4090. Well, moving forward, we noticed that with frame generation on the 5000 series, you can go up to times four and on the 40 series, you can go up to times two essentially. So when it comes to actual frame generation, which me personally, I have no problems with frame generation in DLSS 4. Uh, I only recommend it mainly on single player titles, like you know, your Indiana Jones, um, your Cyberpunk, stuff like that. When it comes to competitive gaming, that really comes up to you on you trying it out to see how it feels for you. Now, Nvidia did release Reflex 2, which also makes a huge difference on input delay. Um, so you can kind of play around with it, see what you think on that aspect. But me personally, we want to use only full-on rasterization in this benchmarks that we're going to be showing you here. And the test bench that we did use was an AMD Ryzen 9800X 3D paired with 64 gig 6000 C28 RAM. So this is going to be a really good test, essentially, uh, for the setup. And we did 1440p across the board because we feel like this GPU is going to be more 1440p GPU uh, at the most. Definitely not a 4K GPU. You can play 4K. You might run some, into some VRAM issues. So let's jump right into it. I know you guys are eager to see how this compares against the previous generation. So we use an RTX 4070 Super uh, in comparison. All right, so in Monster Hunter Wilds, which has been a very popular game recently, it just came out, uh, the RTX 5070 averaged 72.5, while the 4070 Super averaged 66.7. So we saw a little increase in performance here, nothing crazy, nothing to be like eye-opening, but we are competing against the 4070 Super. So it is a Super from last generation. This is not a Super 5070. So if I were to compare it to a 4070 non-Super, we definitely see a little bit less performance, probably like around the 64, 63 range, nothing crazy, but we'd probably see about a 10 FPS difference uh, if I was doing it to a non-Super. All right, moving on to Assassin's Creed, uh, we see a difference here as well. So with the RTX 5070, it averaged 119 FPS with a minimum of 55 and a max of 305. And then the RTX 4070 Super averaged 104 with a minimum of 48 and a maximum of 226. I did run this benchmark multiple times because I kept seeing this influx on the max FPS, uh, which is kind of crazy. The average of 119 on the 5070 and then having a max of 305 is a pretty drastic difference. Um, and I did run it multiple times, just making sure everything was good. Uh, same thing happened on the 5070 Ti, uh, hit a max of 308. So it, it's just, it was just interesting how it was working out. Again, I ran it multiple times. I checked different GPUs with Nvidia side of things and yeah, they were all hitting some pretty high FPS when it came to the FPS max. All right, moving on to Far Cry 6. Uh, once again, this one, we did notice a decent uh, change in performance as well. So on the 5070, it averaged 143 with a minimum of 128 and a max of 166. And then on the 4070 Super, we averaged 125 with a minimum of 110 and a max of 141. So we saw a nice little increase in performance here on the average uh, on the GPU on the 5070. So it was a pretty nice jump. And then just to kind of throw it in a little bit too, the 5070 Ti to give you some perspective, on Far Cry 6 it averaged 168. So I kind of threw that in there for you all so you can kind of see the difference of you know an MSRP GPU of 550, an MSRP GPU of 750. We're not sure what the pricing is gonna be of this yet exactly. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. At the time of recording of this, we don't have the exact pricing yet for this specific model. All right, so moving on to Cyberpunk, uh, same thing, 1440p max settings. Now on this one, we did ray tracing and no ray tracing. So starting off with the 5070, we averaged 25.67 with a minimum of 19 and a max of 32.13. And then the 4070 Super wasn't too far off uh, with ray tracing enabled, 24.59 on average, uh, with a minimum of 19.9, .9, so very similar on the minimum side of things. And then the max was 30.19, so it's only off by about two FPS versus the 5070. Now, when we turned off ray tracing, we noticed a nice increase in performance here. So on the 5070, we averaged 110 FPS with a minimum of 92 and a max of 140, while the 4070 Super averaged 88 
That's a big, that's a big difference. So 88 to 110 on the 5070, and then 71 on the minimum, and then 114 on the max. So this one, we notice a huge jump in performance without using ray tracing. So I'm kind of curious, I'm not sure, you know, as far as the, the ray tracing engine and stuff like that, but the 5070 did really good without ray tracing on Cyberpunk. And then just to kind of throw it in there as well for you all, the 5070 on uh, ray tracing did 34 on average, and then without ray tracing did 131. So again, 110 on, without ray tracing to 131, it's about a 20 something, 21 FPS difference. Uh, again, to the 5070 Ti versus the 5070. All right, so Call of Duty Black Ops 6. On this one, we went ahead and did competitive settings. So this is not a max settings. We're still at 1440p. On the RTX 5070, it averaged 219 with a minimum or a low 1% low, low first of 156, low fifth of 171, while the 4070 Super averaged 204 with a low first of 148 and a low fifth of 162. Now on this one, that wasn't that big of a drastic difference in performance. So the average of 219 on the 5070 and 204 on the 4070 Super. So nothing crazy here, uh, but again, keep in mind we are comparing it to a Super variant of the 70 series from the last generation. So possibly the 5070 Super will definitely, if they do come out with one, again, speculation on that, um, then we'll definitely see a nice little increase in performance. If it was a non-Super on the 4070, probably looking around like 190 something on average. So it'd probably see like a 20, 25, you know, FPS jump. Uh, and then again, just to throw it in there for you all, the 5070 Ti did an average of 260. So 219 to 260, that's actually a pretty drastic jump from the 5070 to the 5070 Ti. All right, moving on to Forza Horizon, what we went ahead and did on this one, we did two different tests. We did one where we just tested the game itself. Then we tested the game again, but while streaming at the same time to test the encoder. So on this one, we saw the RTX 5070 average 146 FPS, while the 4070 Super averaged 131. So it's a nice little increase, 15 FPS there. And then while streaming, when we did streaming and gaming on a single PC setup, the 5070 went from 146 average down to 133. And then the 4070 Super went from 131 average to 110 average. So we saw a, a nice drop, about 21 FPS on the 4070 Super. Uh, and then about only about, was it 13 FPS on the 5070? So there was a drop. Definitely the 5070 did a little bit better on performance when it came to the streaming and gaming on a single PC setup. All right, so a little bonus. Uh, while I was doing this, some testing, Dune Benchmark did come out. Uh, so we went ahead and did it, some Dune Benchmarks as well. So the 5070, uh, there's three actually benchmarks within the Dune Benchmark. There's uh, player built bases, which is the first one, averaged 77.1. Uh, Harco Village averaged 81.7. And then Sandworm averaged 119. Moving on to the 4070 Super, uh, we averaged 70 in the built bases. Harco Village averaged 76.9, and then Sandworm averaged 105.4. There wasn't too much of an increase here, but it was about seven FPS on average uh, on this one to, I think on the Sandworm, we jumped up 14 FPS. So some slight performance increase on Dune uh, benchmarking. So it was kind of interesting to see the three different locations. So it kind of varied on some locations. But again, that could just be the engine itself. And we're still having, you know, we still have some early drivers as well for the 5070. All right, so 3 Mark Time Spy GPU score. We went ahead and did just did raw performances, synthetic benchmarks, this is with no ray tracing, no DLSS, none of that stuff. Um, the 5070 had a GPU score of 20,994, while the 4070 Super had a GPU score of 20,370. So not too much of a jump. Uh, if you have a 4070 Super, personally, obviously, I wouldn't recommend upgrading to a 5070. Uh, this is more for those that have like a 3070. Now, if we compare this to a 3070, a 30 series GPU, you would notice a nice jump in increase. So that's, I guess the main focus would be upgrading from 30 series to this would be definitely a good jump. So that wraps up the RTX 5070 review. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, benchmarking this GPU. Once again, huge shout out to MSI for sending us this card. This GPU looks phenomenal. I do like the fact that it is still uh, a, the mid-tier 70 series card, but it looks more like a premium card, which I really do enjoy. Now, make sure you are subscribed as well, guys, because we are gonna be doing some testing, the, 30, the 5070 versus the 9070, which this is closer to the MSRP of the card to match these two up. Um, now, obviously, MSRP, as we all know, that's suggested you know, pricing. It's not the official pricing, so AIB partners are gonna be different. If I would recommend this GPU, uh, if it stays closer to the 550 price point, then I would definitely recommend this GPU. We just gotta 
see what the official price would be for the trio uh, once it is officially out. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see on that end. So thank you again for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe.